Expert Systems, Lesson 2. So let's keep going through this chapter. So just bear with me as we go through it. The, some of these terms and descriptions, definitions might be a bit vague. But like I said, when we go through this topic again, it might get a little bit better. So just hang in with me. So what is the inference engine? Okay, so the inference engine is the part of the expert system that makes judgments and reasoning using the knowledge base and the user responses. It is designed to produce reasoning based on a set of rules. Okay, so just this image again from the previous video. So maybe you've got your three main components. You've got your user interface, inference engine, and knowledge base. So these three components work together to form the expert system. So remember the knowledge base is the database of information in regards to a specific field, remember like a medical field, or have all the illnesses and symptoms and treatments, etc. for those illnesses. The inference engine is going to be the part that uses this information and uses also the user's responses via the user interface to then find out if, for example, in a medical uh, expert system, to find out what illness this person might have and what the treatments are. So the inference engine is the part that does like all the calculations sort of and all the reasoning to actually find out and give a solution for this person what is happening. So it's the part that thinks in the system. What does the inference engine do and how does it do this? It organizes and controls steps to solve the problem. It uses a method called the chaining method to do this. It combines if-then rules to form a line of reasoning. So we saw like one in the previous video. I think it was like if you have if, if an animal has feathers, then it is a bird. So that is like an example of an if-then rule. So the if part is a condition. For example, if I am hungry, that is a condition. Okay, so the then part is an action. So the full condition and action for this type of example here is going to be if I am hungry then I will need to eat okay so but we're going to see a couple of these examples of these rules coming up but just have a vague idea of how this works there are two methods that can be used to obtain a result by the inference engine how does it know which method to use it will depend on how the expert system was designed, if it is designed to produce a diagnosis or final result. Okay, that's the one method. So if it's only to give a diagnosis without any um, any like incident information uh, to what you think might be the problem, for example. So you don't give it any input about what you think is the problem, for example, with your health. It just asks you questions and eventually it will produce its own diagnosis or result to whatever problem you are trying to fathom. So that's the one method as opposed to it begins with a known conclusion and then tries to support or get evidence for this conclusion. So in this method, for example in the medical expert system, you might think you have a sinus infection. So the expert system before it starts trying to ask you questions, you are going to let it know what you think you have. So you think you've got a sinus infection, so you're going to put that in the expert system. And then what the expert system is going to do is it's then going to try and prove if you actually do have a sinus infection. So it'll ask questions in relation to sinus infections. And if you affirm every single question, for example, it will then prove that you actually do have a sinus infection. Whereas over here, you don't say you have a sinus infection and the expert system, through asking you questions about your health, should hopefully, on its own, get to the result or diagnosis that you have a sinus infection. Okay, so those are just the two ways um, that the inference engine could work. So one method is forward chaining. What is this? So this is related in, in relating to the previous slide. If the process starts with a set of conditions and chaining moves towards a final conclusion, so you don't give it the conclusion, it goes towards its own conclusion, that's forward chaining. 
In a full chaining system, the expert system will take the data input and match it to the knowledge and rules it contains. So it takes information that you put in, in other words, from the user, and it uses that information that you give it um, basically with the knowledge base and the rules it contains to try and get to some conclusion. So it'll keep doing this until it can reach an end goal or outcome. A full chaining system is data driven, data is gathered about the problem, and then the system infers what it can from the data to reach a conclusion. So data is gathered about the problem, you will give all your symptoms in, etc. And then the system will give some diagnosis, okay, in terms of a medical expert system. What is an example for chaining? If the user has a temperature higher than 37 degrees, they have a fever, right? So the user will say they have a temperature higher than 37, and the system will then gather that they have a fever. It will tell them that that is its conclusion. If the user has been sick for a week and has a fever, the user may have a bacterial infection. So these are just kind of those rules. So the if then. So if the user has some condition, then they have a bacterial infection, for example. These start with conditions that produce a diagnosis. All right, so they start with a condition, they have a temperature higher than 37, and it produces a diagnosis. Then they have a fever. What is backward chaining? So this is the opposite. If the process starts with a known conclusion, but the path to it is unknown, the chaining will work in reverse, and this is called backward chaining. The system in this case has a goal or solution. So in other words, the user is going to say, like we said just now, the user is going to say they have a sinus infection. And then the inference engine is going to attempt to find evidence to prove it. So here are some examples. The solution to be proved is that the patients say they have a fever. Okay, so what is the expert system going to ask this person? They're going to ask the person if they have a temperature of over 37. If the person agrees to this, then the expert system is going to provide evidence to say, yes, they have a fever. Or another one, assertion to be proved. The patient says they have a, a throat infection. Okay, so now it's going to throw out a question in regards to a throat infection. And if they affirm it, then it's going to say they do have a throat infection. But if they go against it, they might say, no, you don't have a throat infection. So if the person has a red throat, so it's going to say, do you have a red throat, for example? If they affirm it, then yes, there are signs of a throat infection. All right. So those are examples of backward chaining. You actually state what problem or illness you have, and then the system is going to throw out questions at you about that specific problem you have stated and try and prove that yes that is what you have. What are advantages and disadvantages of expert systems? Okay so just to go through these briefly the advantages of an expert system is got fewer mistakes expert systems never forget answers to questions to problems people sometimes do. More knowledge than a single human expert so it's got you know, hundreds of experts have supplied knowledge for the knowledge base of a single expert system. So it's going to have way more knowledge than any single human expert. It's cheaper to use than hiring a very expensive experts to solve your problems. And more consistent answers than humans. Uh, they give the same answers to the same problems every time because that's how they're programmed to work. Disadvantages. They cannot make judgments and lack common sense. If the errors in the rule base can lead to incorrect decisions being made. So if someone has accidentally made some error with the if then rules, maybe they said if your temperature is lower than 37 you have a fever, but that is incorrect, it should be the other way around, then it might give an incorrect solution to your problem, for example. So that is one uh, problem that can come about. And it might require lots of training before people can actually use the system correctly. So someone's going to show you how to use the computer system or the expert system before it is properly used. Give any uses for an expert system. So this is the last slide for today. 
So expert systems can be used in these fields, and these are just some of them. Medical diagnosis, car mechanical diagnosis. If you've ever played chess online, the chess has a database of all different moves input by different experts, and it knows the different moves by the experts. So that is an example of an expert system. You can get financial advice from it. You can troubleshoot computer and printer issues. Identifying items, for example, plants and birds, and using a telephone help desk is also another use. Okay, cool. I hope that was all right. Uh, just let me know if you have any questions.